The 10th race of the 2012 TM Light Series saw Mike Andrews in car number 51 capture the Delano Polo while driving for racing for the community. This is Tyrone Stanley's team, and this team prefers to hire African American drivers and engineers. However, they are open to pretty much anyone. They're known uh, throughout the paddock for doing a lot of public service, uh, this 51 team. Uh, they haven't exactly been doing a lot of public service on the racetrack, or at least Mike Andrews hasn't. He uh, had a very messy start to the season, but it looks like he's cleaned up his act this week in the uh, Windy City subs car. But anyway, that's uh, Nathan Ferguson in that red and black number four up front. That's Claire Ossier in the 28, and uh, Brandon Lario in the 33 car. And Andrews looks like he's beginning to stretch his leaders. They go three wide behind him, and after a couple of laps, you'll notice that he's pulled out a very substantial lead over Ferguson. This is just the kind of confidence boost that Mike Andrews needs, and this could vault him into a TM Master Cup Series drive in the future if he keeps his pace up. A little further back in the field, points leader Ike Durbin in car number 08 blows up early in the race, and he would be the first retirement of the day. Uh, Ike Durbin is not related to the uh, former Master Cup champion Tony Durbin. He has not won a TM Lights race, but he hopes to be full-time in Master Cup Series next year. John Jefferson in uh, car number... Uh, 37 is going to be the first caution of the event when Claire Ossier, the 28, uh, shoves up right into him. Claire Ossier and Jefferson have both been wrecking balls, and so is that 58 car that just hammered into the back of the 37 car for no good reason. That is off Zelta Mead. Lang Chung Kun, car number 6, had mechanical problems under that yellow. He pulled the car into the pits, and they immediately pulled car number 6 behind the wall, and his day was done. Uh, Justin Robinson and Troy Adams stayed out and put the entire field a lap down due to a abnormally fast pace speed. I don't really know why uh, the pace car is going as fast as it is, but you'll also notice Martin Baltno Jr. in the 96 and Tiffany Matthews did likewise. So here we go. Uh, looks like Robinson's got a pretty good start. Nathan Ferguson off the lead lap due to um, what I can only say is some uh, rather questionable pace car antics. But anyway... Robinson lets Ferguson go. The Unit 11 driver has not won a TM Lights race yet. Uh, Troy Adams won earlier in the year at Portland in uh, car number 9, and he's hoping to take his second win here today, as I think Martin Baltano may have just hit the wall in the back. Uh, Robinson's going to be able to get around Nathan Ferguson, and he hopes to have a run on Justin Robinson in car number 11. Here's Jim Hayes, car number 07. He's been in the wall a couple times. This is his home race, and it is also Team Thunder's home race. Uh, they've been having a very messy season so far, as well as Tiffany Matthews in the 16 car, and she's pushing way up the track, way up the track, and gets run into by Buffy Borinaz. There's James Davis in the Michigan winner, and, uh, well, Tiffany Matthews into the wall again. Uh, I wonder if Tiffany Matthews would even have a drive at all if, uh, the team wasn't owned by her husband, Ryan Matthews. Hmm. Anyway, Mike Andrews in the 51 car has been running a, uh, pretty clean race, as I mentioned before. He's restarting with the lead. Martin Baltano Jr. is the last car in the lead lap. He's been having some problems in that 96 car. Martin Baltano Jr. actually won earlier in the season in Peoria after he started in last place, but came through to win. Robinson has been uh, pretty disappointing in this car number 11 until right now. He's uh, not really been on the pace this season so far. Uh, some people felt he's feel that he's been in the series a bit too long. He needs to start winning races and show that he's actually worthy of advancing his career up the motorsport ladder. He sits in second. Here's Ryan Griffin, car number 18, who just dives into turn one way too hard. He just pushes up the track into Dermot Scott in the 10 car and brings out a caution, and Roger Kendall gets in there. Now, I don't know why you'd mess with Dermot Scott, because he's sponsored by uh, MMA Apparel uh, Company, so uh, I don't exactly think if we're going to be uh, picking on somebody else on track, that's the person you should be messing with. Uh, Troy Adams, car 9, restarts with the lead in... Um, the uh, car number nine, so right, uh, Mike Andrews in that 51 car is stuck behind uh, the, the number four car of Nathan Ferguson. Uh, Ferguson's not in the lead lap, so I don't know why he's in the right-hand lane. So, um, clearly something went uh, awry in that yellow. Here's Brian Morris, winner of the season opener in car number 14. He's going to get run into by Nasa Sunamachi, who's several laps behind him, and Sunamachi just exited the pit lane, causing a huge traffic jam. Sakura Matoko in the 40 car in it. Sunamachi, um was definitely called to the hauler for the uh, steward's office. So we're going to have to see. Here's slow motion. There's Tsunamachi. You can see car number five leaving the pit lane. There's Justin Robinson in the 11 car. He's going to barely get away with this one. But uh, Tsunamachi just drives straight into Morris. Now, I don't know what's been going on between those two. Robinson actually does get a piece of that in the 11 car. 
Thurston Blood's in it. Martin Balton Jr. Soccer Matoko comes flying in there. Doesn't really use the brakes uh, as much as she should have. There's Jefferson, the 37. I guess he missed that. Anyway, here's Dermot Scott under yellow. Uh, that a car right behind him is Cesar Villanova. Now, he's not... Now, Dermot Scott is apparently not too happy with Mike Andrews. And here's how Mike Andrews is showing his displeasure uh, bet between himself and Dermot Scott and runs him straight into the pit wall. That earns Andrews' trip this... Whoa! Thomas Cade going to the back of the 96 car of Martin Baltino Jr. Dermot Scott in the 10 car would... Uh, I can't imagine he has some very nice things to say about Mike Andrews, but uh, apparently they haven't been too pleased with each other at all during the weekend. In the meantime, Troy Adams is uh, trying to figure out how wide to run a corner on the restart. And this he's t trying to find uh, another groove out there. I don't know why. This is kind of a one-lane track in some places. Nathan Ferguson, the four car, gets into trouble with Jacob Card in the 133. Brings out another caution flag. Anyway... Adams is still in the lead in uh, car nine. Uh, Mike Andrews and Justin Robinson are the only other cars on the lead lap. Robinson, though, is mired back in traffic. Mike Andrews in that 51 car, probably going to have some uh, uh, qu uh, interesting questions to answer after the race. Axel Andersson, the 997 car, is running in fourth. He's off the lead lap. He's only one lap down, but uh, he's having a pretty solid run considering, uh, well, this is probably the most forgettable car in the series. It's just a gray car with a number on it. Uh, and he's been kind of having a forgettable season. Anyway, Mike Andrews in the 51. He's trying to run down Mark Blackwell. It's the second of the two Unit 11 cars. And Andersson in the 997. Whoa, Mike Andrews way out of, uh, off the groove. So, looks like uh, some of the adjustments they might have made uh, haven't really worked. Or the fact that all the damage he's gotten to the car. Here's uh, Anyway, here's Andrea Canassa getting wrecked by Eric Molina in the 21. Eric Molina is kind of had a nothing season so far, and Andrea Canassa really didn't need that. Uh, Canassa has not really been known for doing anything other than crashing in this series anyway. Uh, after the restart, here's Cameron Taylor in the 68 car as he continues to be himself and uh, trying to run over people. Uh, hometown hometown races have not worked too well for Cameron Taylor. He was kind of a wrecking ball in uh, peak. Well, here is uh, Brandon Lario getting run into the wall by Ryan Griffin. Now that was uncalled for. Uh, the 18 car was called to the steward's office, and uh, Larry is not uh, terribly happy, I can imagine, with uh, Ryan Griffin. Anyway, on the restart, Troy Adams, surprise, surprise, still in the lead. Uh, and then there's Justin Robinson though, in the 11 car, who's a little closer than he has been. We'll have to see if Robinson has anything for Troy Adams in uh, that 9 car. Adams has been pretty dominant so far today. And uh, the Australian really hoping to solidify his Master Cup Series career. Here, anyway, here's been here's Bobby Dell in the 98 car. He's been pitting endlessly in order to not get pulled off the track for being too slow. There's something wrong with his 98 car. Marcus Leonard did the same thing at Salem several years ago. Wound up 38 laps down, but still ended up finishing the race. Justin Robinson, the 11 car, is actually faster than Troy Adams right now. So, car number 11, looks like he's going to be able to make a race out of this. Unit 11 Motorsports uh, has not really won a race yet. Whoa, Troy Adams way up in the marbles out in no man's land. Uh, Unit 11 Motorsports is, I don't think they've won a race. So, um, they're really, really working hard on it with um, their primary car, Justin Robinson. Uh, he's closing in on Troy Adams. It looks like Adams may have just slipped up just a little bit. And yes, you see right here, the 11 car is right on Troy Adams' tail. Looks like Adams just gets away from him a little bit at the end of the straightaway. Uh, Robinson, maybe he's going to go for the lead or maybe he's going to sit back and ride as Mike Andrews is way out in no man's land as you may have seen in the background in that blue and yellow 51. Anyway, you see Troy Adams bull way going wide. He just blew that corner. Robinson to the lead in car number 11. We're about halfway through and uh, Robinson takes over the lead and Adams dropping way back. So Robinson now comes on lap cars, and he uh, lets off very, very early. And now Adams is right back on the tail as they work on the tail as they work around um, Brandon Larry in the afterburner car. But there comes Troy Adams on the inside in car number nine. We're gonna have to see if Robinson can be able to power by on the outside. Uh, lap traffic is too wide up there, so they're not exactly gonna have the easiest time picking through them. Looks like the winner of this battle for the lead will be who? Went. Wow, John Jefferson's all over the racetrack. And um, Jefferson's now going to have to deal with Adams. Uh, Adams is looks like he's going to have the uh, the edge on Jefferson. No, Jefferson not being a good back marker today. As uh, Robinson trying to get by on the outside. Jefferson not sure what he's doing right now. 
I don't even think he's sure what he's doing. Uh, but anyway, Jefferson finally lets Troy Adams go by in the uh, car number nine. As you see, he just runs over the uh, 96 car of Martin Baltno Jr. Now, wow, Jefferson's... Um, I said I don't, he, I don't, didn't look like he was even sure what he was doing, but that was just... Um, wow, I don't know why he wanted to run into Martin Baltno Jr. The Canadian hasn't really done anything to Jefferson all race as Robinson takes over the lead again in the 11. So Robinson, uh, looks like once they get into clean air, it looks like he might be faster. Uh, here is Andrea Canassa in the 05 car, uh, punching bag of the day, as she gets run over by Jim Hayes, who has been kind of one of the crash masters of the TM Lights this season, if you haven't been paying too close of attention. Bringing out another caution in this 125 lap race. Three cars still in the lead lap. The order's been shuffled, though. Uh, botched pit stop by the Unit 11 boys drops. Uh, Robinson back to 30. He's going to have to work around Mike Andrews, who uh, has a lot of damage. Uh, most of it self-inflicted, I would imagine, after that little run-in with Dermot Scott earlier in the race. But anyway, here is Robinson in the 11 car trying to get around Andrews, and Mike Andrews is racing him for a position, and he doesn't feel like rolling over and playing dead. Uh, in other words, he's not exactly making Robinson's life easy. Here's uh, Ryan Griffin doing what he does best, um, running into people. Looks like he runs into Zach Gott, and it looks like Bernard Strauss might be next on his hit list. Um, Ryan Griffin has not exactly been earning too many friends this weekend in general. Whoa! Troy Adams in trouble with Archer Harris! Now, I don't know why Troy Adams felt he needed to race that hard around a lap car, because he had a pretty substantial lead, and he turns himself in front of the 79 car. Um, and, uh, sort of brought out a caution that he didn't need. Well, he's sort of setting himself up but uh, for Mike Andrews to have another run at him. And when you got John Jefferson on the inside, that doesn't exactly play too well because Jefferson's been uh, all over the place today as well. Justin Robinson did not get a very good restart. Mike Andrews, though, in that 51 car, even though the stewards are going to be uh, wanting to talk to him later, looks like he did. Oh, never mind. Mike Andrews having a bit of a problem there. Looks like he uh, got a little loose coming off three and four. And uh, Kinesa and Jefferson are going to make Adams' life as easy as possible. That's a shock. There's Claire Alcerin, the 28 car is also a bit of a wrecking ball. Here's uh, Joseph Cummings in the 04 and Nathan Ferguson in the 04. They've been going at it a little bit today. And uh, they finally take each other into the wall on lap 107 of 125. Here we go again. Another restart. It's not exactly what uh, Troy Adams wanted to see. Uh, you saw on the front straightaway, Cesar Villanova was around. Uh, he had a problem, mechanical problem, and slowed suddenly in the front straightaway, and Roger Kendall and the two just ran straight into the back of him, uh, ending Kendall's day, um, probably taking him out of, uh, everyone else's misery. Anyway, Claire Ossier goes by the, uh, the leader, Troy Adams, Mike Andrews second, and Justin Robinson sitting in third. Troy Adams hoping to pull away from Mike Andrews as quickly as possible in, uh, car number nine, and... Looks like Troy Adams is going to have a pretty easy way home, and Mike Andrews is not really going to have anything for him. Troy Adams takes his second TM Lights win of the season. Coming home second, Mike Andrews, Justin Robinson third. Those are the only three cars on the lead lap. There were no cars that finished one lap down. Archer Harris uh, came home a fairly solid fourth place. Axel Anderson, solid run today. Cameron Taylor uh, didn't do what he did at Peekwell, which is run into everything in sight, so it uh, looks like he may be... Uh, Slowly outgrowing the caution Taylor nickname. Zach got in the car 71 in a solid day. Martin Baltno Jr. in the 96 car is uh, con uh, continually having uh, good performances. The former uh, ROL champion and uh, Nathan Ferguson, car number four. He has two wins on the season so far. This is what he needed. Jacob Carden in the 133 had a good run, along with Jim Hayes, even though Hayes seemed to be uh, kind of on a rampage. And the punching bag of the day, Andrea Canasta came home in 19th place. John Jefferson in car number 37. There are some reports that he may get replaced in the MRD car. Thurston Blood, last year's champion, took home the final points paying position. He came home in 20th place, driving for PSI. And here are the championship points as they leave Ohio. Troy Adams has solidified his lead in the championship. Ike Durbin has yet to win a race still. Soccer Matoko in car number 40. Andrea Canasta sits fourth in the championship despite uh, being run over by everything in, everything in sight today, seemingly. 
Nathan Ferguson, car number four, uh, continues to impress, along with uh, Ali Collada, who's one of the surprises of this season, I believe. I think this season was sort of a uh, last chance for Collada, who's she's one of those drivers that's been in TM Lights for a very long time, hasn't really had a whole lot of success until this season. Mike Andrews has had sort of an up and down TM Lights career. Archer Harris uh, in the 79 car had a solid uh, had a solid season. Brian Morris in the 14 won the season opener, and of course Thomas Cade, sort of an uh, underdog performer in car number 15. The TM Light Series will be back in action at the Grand Detour of Southern Illinois near Quincy for round 11.